Hey, everybody, this is Tony, and I'm here today with a special guest, Miss Cassandra Lucas from the group Changing Faces. How are you today? I'm wonderful. What about you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Good. Um, now, you, you obviously came from a group that, that came from a lot of great success, um, the group Changing Faces. Um, now, how did that group get started, um, and how did we get to be with R. Kelly and um, – and all this great success. How did we get? How did you okay. get started? Well, we got started. Um, actually, we were both at the same high school. We met in high school. Uh, we went to mm-hmm. LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts. And okay. um, while in school, you know, we used to, you know, do gigs and auditions, and you know, um, uh, make you know, create little groups. And one time it was right, three, right. and it turned down to two. <laughs> You know, so um, eventually we did go on an audition. Um, Sybil, you know, uh, Sybil the singer was looking for right. background singers, and we actually landed that gig. Um, and we were like super excited. By that time, we were in college. We were out of high school by then, and we toured. Okay. Um, we had the uh, opportunity to tour with Sybil, and that was like our first like worldwide um, tour, and we were able to see it you know, to see the industry from the stage, so to speak, you know, like just mm-hmm. um, how the fans reacted, you know, and I think that's like when we caught the bug, like we want to do this professionally. We were already in school for it, but I think you okay. don't know it until you know it, till you have, you know, you get a chance to get out there and get a taste of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm really grateful to Sybil for that because uh, her giving us that opportunity allowed us to actually see it on a broader scale. Mm-hmm. And um, that's when uh, we started changing faces. And, um, of course, it took us about five years or so to to land a deal. People think that stuff happens overnight, but it doesn't. Right, right, right. right. You come to a lot of crossroads because at that time <laughs> – There was, like, In Vogue and, um, you know, Brownstone and, you know, it was a lot of four-girl groups, three-girl groups. So when you come with two girls, they were like, "Mm, no, you know, the record label's like to copycat, you know. Right, right. So it was like, no, we need another (laughs) SWV or we need another In Vogue, and two girls are just not enough. That hasn't been done before. And, okay, but if it hasn't been done, let's do it. You know, we were on the let's do something that hasn't been done. So a lot of doors, you know, we heard a lot of no's, which for us is just a new opportunity. That's how I look at it. You know, that's okay. A a no is a new opportunity for me. And um, so we just kept pushing until eventually, actually, um, my my best girlfriend, but she turned manager for us, knew of Kenny Smooth, who opened up a label at uh, Spore Rotten. And he was, you know, looking for new acts. And um, he was getting a deal with Big Beat. Um, okay. which is Craig Coleman. That's the president now of Atlantic, Craig Coleman. And she was like, well, maybe you guys can audition for him and see, you know, he'll sign you to his label. And right. that's how we got signed to, by the grace of God, we got there late to audition and everything. That's a whole other story because the, cause the <laughs> trains were stuck. The train was stuck in between the tunnel and New York City, so we were like a mm-hmm. sweaty mess running to catch this meeting, and they were actually leaving. He was leaving out the meeting, so we ended up having to sing our audition on the street corner. In front oh, wow. Of right. Oh, but wow. So that was now, nothing but Now that. or never. Right. <laughs> so it was yeah. like when that opportunity, that door opens, you better, you better open your mouth and sing. So we did that, <laughs> and, you know, we were a little nervous because we was like, everything just went wrong that day. So we were like, mm-hmm. well, are they going to call us back? And sure enough, thank you, God, they did. Um, and how we, the whole R. Kelly thing came about was when we uh, worked on our demo and we were working on, you know, um, starting our album, they just asked us to put together a wish list. I can't even okay. recall who the other uh, producers were on that list, but R. Kelly was one of the people that we, you know, they were really hot. Public announcement was hot. He was getting ready to do right, his, right. Um, his own solo thing, and we were like, he was one of the people that we said we wanted to work with, that we fig- would fit our style. Um, mm-hmm. And so they were like, well, right now he's really hot, and they're doing tours, and, uh, and he has Aaliyah, and, you know, it was a lot going on. It was like, I don't know if he's going to. And we were just like, just send our demo. If he says yes, he says yes. If he said no, it's nothing that we never heard before. <laughs> you know right, what I'm right. saying? So we, you know, <laughs> we, we, we just, let's do it. And they okay. did it, and he heard us and was like, yes, I would love to work with them. 
And that's wow. how the whole R. Kelly thing. Because people think that we were an R. Kelly group, but we weren't. We were signed to Sport Rotten Big Beat. We just put together a wish list of people that we would have liked to work with, and that's how the whole R. Kelly thing came about. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Because he um, obviously produced, like, you, you guys' first uh, singles. Um, yes. And those were great successes. Um, yes. On the chart, as far yeah. as sales, uh, also. So, but that's a that's a great story, and it's you know it's it's crazy how things happen. Because like I said, it it couldn't be nothing but God for you guys to get signed on that street corner that day. Isn't that crazy? Especially, <laughs> yeah, especially with things going the way that they go. Because I I've seen it happen. I seen things happen like that. You know, even in my life, like one day things just went that that wrong. But you got that right. Yes. Isn't and that so, crazy? And you think because of, that's why it doesn't matter how you start; it always matters how you finish. And people right, don't really right. realize that, but it's so true. And God shows us that every day. <laughs> you know, you can wake up feeling bad, but by the end of the day, you know, great things, you know, have happened. So yeah, you have yeah. to, you know, take both. You take the good with the bad, but just celebrate the good, you know, and keep Absolutely. it moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's mm-hmm. that's the truth. Um, and so now you guys go ahead and you have, you know, R. Kelly producing and writing for you. Um, mm-hmm. But another great um, point that I see you bring up somewhere else um, is that people didn't realize that um, you and the other member, Sharice, uh, wrote most of mm-hmm. you guys' um, singles also. Yeah, yeah, I thought that, I mean, you know what I think? I mean, now we're in the age of women, and I'm just happy how we're, you know, we're being liberated and, and you know, you're getting to see all facets of women right. in the industry, you know, from from acting to music to whatever. But, uh, you know, we wrote, and I don't know if back then it seemed to be like a, a, a man-driven industry, so to speak, the mm-hmm. heads of the companies, a lot, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the people in big positions were men. And between right. the producers, writers, or whatever. So I don't know if we just never had interviews to speak about it. I, I recall speaking about it, but it's just funny to me how now we're in 2018 and I'm and I still have to say 20 something years ago that we wrote. <laughs> so, right, you know, right. it's just it's, I think it's just something that just goes by, you know, flies by people because I don't think that they automatically assume that they're like the Missy Elliott's out there and the Alicia Keys right. and the, you know, right. these, you know, you you these women are super talented, so it's like we have to give you know recognition where it where it's deserved to be, and we did on our first album, second album, every single album. We actually um, we were working on our demo. Thank mm-hmm. God to D- Dinky Bingham. He's the one who like helped us um, start writing, and you know because we were like in high school, getting on a train, going you know uh, working on the demo. Everything was just play play and fun fun but he like brought the the business side to us and he was like you know you girls are great looking girls it's going to be a whole bunch of pretty girls it's going to be a whole bunch of this going to be a whole bunch of but you know what at the end of the day you have you know you have to take control of your career and you need to be a major part of it and that comes with writing because when all other checks stop <laughs> at least you'll still get some royalties when you can't we have no more shows and you can't sing mm-hmm. anymore you know what i'm saying that's what mm-hmm. matters and that's what I, I thank him for that because that's what made us hone into the business side of it because everything seems fun and games and you get made up and, you know, and it's play play, but that's business. Right, right. And, you know, for even the young girls and, and, and boys out there who want to aspire to be in this industry, I would say just be as much in it as you can, you know, um, mm-hmm. and try to can always think of something, a story, or something that happened to you, not maybe not to you, to a friend, to somebody that you can pencil and put down. Um, right. So that this way, it, you know, it's not uh, somebody else isn't writing your story for you. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I don't think anybody else can tell your story the way that you tell it. Absolutely. That's what I always they tell cannot. people. They There you go. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as the writing goes, um, I noticed that you guys had a song on the first album too, written by um, Devonte Swing from Joe. Yes, yes, um, he had a good little. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So mm-hmm. how did how did that um, come about? Also, you, I think Devonte was probably one of the ones on our list. Um, mm-hmm. So that was a blessing to Dave Hall. Um, uh, it was that whole because um, uh, Kenny Smooth came from was 
associated with like the Untouchable, that was Eddie F and Dave. It's like right, that right. whole little crew. So it was a it was a host of talented people, and we were and some of them. You know, we did work with too. They might have made the album because you can only pick you know thirteen songs at the twelve thirteen mm-hmm. songs. But we had the opportunity to work with a lot of good um, producers, and and uh, I don't even real really remember how the whole. Um, Devonte thing came, but I know we were just super excited <laughs> right. to be working with him when we when we did. Yeah, we were right, extremely right. excited. Um, mm-hmm. And as, and as far as the writing goes, also, um, I think a lot of people um, skipped over, kind of skipped over the fact that you all were writing so much because they seen R. Kelly, and it was like R. Kelly was the you know the premier was, person at was, the time. I want to say there you go. He was really hot. Um, you right. know, he's super talented. He is. And um, what happened is uh, the, his songs were the singles. So with that mm-hmm, being said, mm-hmm. you know, and, and our, our collaborations together really worked out. So, right. I, you know, you can't take that away from him. So they automatically think that he wrote everything, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, that was right, just right. the songs that were actually put out. Um, <laughs> because at that time, you if you notice, record labels really only put out, like, two, three songs, you know, from an album. Mm-hmm. And after mm-hmm. that, they were on to the next album. Now right. it's a different story. It's like four or five songs. You know, you the whole album you people can put out because right, it's a right. faster, we move at, at a faster pace. Does that make sense? Right. So it's like, if you knew, our consumer needs more. The audience needs more. So you're able to hear more of the album <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think a lot of people are seeing that now as far as, like, writing with, um, you know, people doing their, their albums and writing um, now, too, because, like, a lot of people didn't realize, like, Candy Burris from, like, Escaping mm-hmm. Housewives, like, they didn't realize that she wrote so many songs. Um, yeah. Like, like No yeah. Scrubs and, and Destiny's Child songs and, yes. you know, all yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. So that's why I thought that was great for to point out for you all, because you had just started out, but you were already writing your own stuff. From the beginning, exactly. And right. sometimes it takes right. a while, too, like for a girl groups from, from, you know, back then and stuff. A lot of times people just come to you with songs and you didn't get the opportunity to write. But that's why I like where we are now because it's uh, in the music industry because it's kind of like recycling back to the, to the mm-hmm. smaller independent labels who give mm-hmm. you the opportunity to be an artist and be creative and they don't just throw producers and songs at you and say sing them you know what i mean so right I'm, right it's, it's, it's kind of recycling back to like where we were and that gives you you know then you get to get like the scissors and the you know people that really are you know you feel them because organically that's them doing it it's no one um it's no one there you know giving them stuff to sing. You know, you're actually giving right, the right. artists, giving you what they have. And right. that's what I love about it. Um, let me ask you something. As far as, like, when somebody brings you a song, uh-huh. um, do you believe that is is you can convey what the artist has written on the paper? Or is it, for, for, for instance, like, well, R. Kelly, I know that you said he already had heard you guys' voice mm-hmm. um, from, the, from the demo. So he went ahead and wrote, I'm assuming, off of that. Um, but if somebody just brings you a song, for instance, and say, you know, this is what I want you to sing, I want you to sing it this way, do mm-hmm. you believe that it's, it's able to be done and you be able to make it believable without you really... Um, that's, you what, that's, that's, that's the determining factor on whether you sing the song or not. If you don't okay. feel... Because to me, um, a singer is like the ultimate actor. You know, I don't right, think people right. look at us that way. But to sing a song, you don't see facial expressions, you don't see tears, but you have to <laughs> feel facial expressions when you hear, right, that song. You have right. to feel the tears if they're singing something sad when you hear that song. So it's right. all through your voice that that has to be expressed. And, if I, you know, if I'm presented with a song, I mean, we've been presented with great songs, you know, and but mm-hmm. if we felt like we couldn't do it justice or bring it to life or it wasn't real, um, mm-hmm. we had to pass on it, you know. I mean, okay. and I'm okay with that because, you know, even as a writer, I, you know, I write and I go, oh, my gosh, you know, I couldn't sing this song. You know, I want to give it to God bless <laughs> the dead, to like Whitney Houston. Or so, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that right, right. really bring the words off the page. And um, I think that's important. Um, and so, you know, and sometimes um, 
you know, when you get songs from other people, they're great songs, but you, you sometimes you might not be the person for it, and that's okay, and it's good to right. know that. It's good to know that. And yeah, just not to is. sing something because it's, uh, you know, you love it. I love songs that are not mine, <laughs> and I'll keep them on right. repeat. I want to hear Jasmine Sullivan sing it, you know what I'm saying? Because she just <laughs> right. does that for me, yeah. Right, right. Um, and so now you guys, uh, Changing Faces, went through, um, you had three albums, successful, successful albums. Um, the last one was Visit Me in 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, on, that, on that album, you guys had a song on there, um, Come Over. Mm-hmm. And then that song was later like uh, released as a Leo single. Um, so who mm-hmm. had the song first? Okay, so this is how it happened. Brian Cox um, was the producer on that song. We went to Atlanta, and um, we heard, when we heard the song, Aaliyah was the demo. Um, she demoed that song. I don't know okay. if it was what happened. Maybe it was a song that she was not going to um, use on her album, and then unfortunately mm-hmm. she passed thereafter. Um, so right. I believe what happened was, I mean, we paid for the song in terms of our label. We that was a single that was on our Visit Me album. Um, I think right. what happened though, um, unfortunately, you know, with her untimely death, they were pulling for material that. A Leah had out there, you know, everybody wanted to hear it and come over happened to be something that her voice was on and she sound great. So they were like, right, you know, right. they put that out as a single as well. We didn't write it or, you know, or produce it. So, you know, it's at, it's at their discretion to, you know, to put it out. So mm-hmm. end up, Aaliyah had the, had a version of it and change your faces, which is all great. And I love her version too. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause they both mm-hmm. sound good. So it, 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 yeah. it worked out uh, well. Thank you. Um, just, just as well as the other singles that you all put out, like Get Out and, you know, Fooling Around. I specifically mm-hmm. like Fooling Around just because of the harmonies that you guys do on that song. Oh, yeah. Um, right? I like that. And the harmonies there, too. I, yeah. I'm, I'm crazy about harmonies. Um, me, but me, too. I just love me, that too. <laughs> <laughs> me, yeah, too. I, I I, that's that. what I used to do. Like, say if it's a commercial, Cheerios or whatever, that's the way I studied them. Like, any song I heard, I would just study what the harmony is on the song, you know? Right, that, right, right. <laughs> you make up because your own I, harmony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I came, well, not came up, I'm not that old, um, but um, in my in my church choir, I was singing in the church choir, so she, my director, she, she made sure that kind of stuff was, like, on point. Yeah, so, choir, you had to know your harmonies. That's a great place right, to, right. to learn them, too. Yeah. Right, so, so <laughs> yeah. when I hear that on records or... Even on live performances, I'm like, okay, they got it. They got um, it, yeah. Like, so that's why I like that song specifically, not because of, um, it may not even be because of the message, but which is which is cool because it's mm-hmm. you know, it's like saying you know you fooling around on me, but mm-hmm. just the just the way the vocals on the track um, come out is is what really gets me with that one. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> no, no problem. And I think another one I really like from you all um, was Get Out uh, Part Two. Oh yeah, isn't that one? People, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people got got in in love with um the first uh get out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that one was really big, but I like the second part um too because that one had R. Kelly on it and you know um so it was right. And then he was basically like pleading his case and he was like See, I got myself together, like you know. So, <laughs> yes, you know he, I love he was that. <laughs> going back and forth. So it was, it was mm-hmm. I liked that one a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but but you all really had some um, some some great songs, some great albums, and you you did some some great stuff over the years. Um, and then even after um, the last album, although it didn't have the success as the first two albums. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's still great as well, because even with the single, um, That Other Woman, uh, I know mm-hmm. that one was written by Joe, if I'm Joe, not mistaken, right? Joe, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Joe is awesome, too. He's great, great songwriter, great singer, like one of the best out there. And, um, yeah, right. that was, I love that song, The Other Woman. And I, but I love the remix for The Other Woman as well. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I think, I don't know if you heard that, but I love that. Yeah, That's the yeah. favorite, my favorite to that one, the remix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And so then after um, 2000, after the last album, what happened mm-hmm. to changes, changing faces um, between the periods um, of then until up until like 2013? Um, well, 
we did some more shows, mostly like overseas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we were going back and forth with the label because, you know, as an artist, sometimes you're prom by this time we're on Atlantic solely. Okay. Um, and you know, you promised a lot of stuff, and you know, and you know, once your album is out, and you know, they they tend to do what they want to do and not what you know they promised to do. Um, right. So right. you know, we had come to like a crossroads, um, and love Craig Coleman and Atlantic, you know, because you know we wouldn't have been where we were without their backing. Um, but we did mm -hmm. come to a crossroads, and um. At that time, we decided to split. So that the split took, you know, because it's illegal stuff. So that took a while, right, probably right. maybe two years in itself, two two and a half years. So we're talking 2003, four, you know, around there. And okay. um, then life just got in the way, and you know, we were like, well, maybe we just do, you know, some separate things. And that's right. where we were then. Um, and we got back. I think together maybe it was around 2013, 2010, maybe mm -hmm. 2010. We started doing some more shows again overseas. We did a couple shows. And about 2013, we were, like, looking to, or a little before. I don't have my dates. So I'm, the, I'm horrible right, right. with dates. But somewhere before <laughs> then, um, we, uh, we decided to work on a new single or possibly an album with Hate Love and to shoot a video. Okay. And then we came to a crossroads. Um, where, you know, creatively we were on different pages. And you know what? That's okay because, you know, God right, does things right. in his time. And mm -hmm. um, I truly believe that. So, I mean, I said I need to sing. I have things that I have to say. So then I started mm -hmm. working on, you know, material. I put out damn just to get like a feeler, you know, and just to, you know, get my feet wet to get out there as a solo artist because that's something that I've never done before. So, you know, right, I just right. put it, you know, just as a warmer. And now... Mm -hmm. I sat and I, um, you know, got my thoughts together, and here I am today, and I'm about to put out an album, which I'm <laughs> super excited about, um, come spring, um, okay. and I have my single now name on it, it's is hitting the radio waves, and I'm just super excited, it's the first time on Billboard in like over 20 years, so. Right, I'm right, <laughs> I've seen that, so that was a major, a major mm -hmm. milestone. Yes, because right now it's like I'm a brand I'm a brand I am a brand new artist. I'm a solo artist, so I'm a brand new mm -hmm. artist coming out in this world that's totally different from me. Um, it's you know filled with IG and Facebook and, <laughs> and right, Twitter right. and stuff that I'm I'm learning on a daily basis and you know uh, trying to let fans know, hey, I'm you know I'm here. You know, it's that's the hard mm -hmm. part. Um, the studio part is not hard because, you know, I just had a lot inside of me that I needed to say and get out. So um, that seemed like God was just continually blessing. Like, you know, every day it was just something new. And, and I just, I'm excited about uh, what mm -hmm. I have. I'm really excited. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard, um, I heard, I listened to the singles um, today. Um, and name on it, I, I, like the, I like the feel of the song. Oh, um, you do? Even with, like, um um, the other ones that you had released prior, like mm -hmm. Music and a Beat, um, mm -hmm. and Damn, and those, I, all of them, like, feel good songs, you know. Um, so I do like that. Um, and as far as the musical direction that you're heading in, like, are, is it going to be um, an extension of the of the sound that we heard with Changing Faces, faces excuse me, or, or something totally different? Well, you know... Um, Tony, that's, I am changing faces. So, you know, that's how I was introduced right, right. to the world in terms of music. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to be in me. And I feel mm -hmm. like I got a little bit of that with name on it. You know, I feel like, right, I do. you know, um, you know, if you stay in your lane and do what you do in terms of that, like, I, I just feel like there's a lane for everybody. I just feel like mm -hmm. good music is missing. And I think I'm, I'm working on a title for my album, but I'm, I'm coming to feel feel good or feel so right, you know, because that's what it's okay. giving me. My album is just giving me, like, good feel, good vibes, be it bad or good. Yeah, even if yeah. you're telling somebody, like, like how Get Out is, even if you tell somebody Get Out, you still do it mm -hmm. in a, a classy, nice way. Even if you're right, saying, right. you know, to your, to your man, to your lady or whatever, it's got your name on it. It's all have to, it has to be done the right way. You know what I'm saying? Right, not raunchy, right. not, not, you know, sottish. <laughs> it needs to be done classy. And, you know, I think there's a place for everything. You know, that's why we have the Marvin Gaze and, you know, everybody does it their way. So I just feel right, like, right. um, the time is now, um, for me to just, you know, do it my way. 
And I think there's a lane for everybody as long as you are true to who you are. Um, I don't have, like, I'm not saying, oh, it's all R&B. You know, you heard music in a beat. That's like, that's Mm -hmm. great dance. Makes you feel good. You put that on, you know what I'm saying? You, I'm doing like 90 on the highway, you know? Right, right, right. You know, that, and I wanted that. I just want to be able to kind of fly and do what my heart feels. And I think this album will, um, will do that. Okay. And how do you feel like the, the process of you being a solo artist, like you said, since you've never done this before, mm-hmm. I know back in like the, you know, early 2000s that you did work like writing and background and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff for like Donnell Jones and, and mm-hmm. Joey Watley and different people like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're, you're actually stepping out in the limelight with at your actual songs and that kind of stuff. So how has the um, process been for you as a solo artist thus far? It's, it's, you know what? I'm blessed. I can't even... I can't even say it's been a bad process. I'm blessed. Um, people mm-hmm. have been really warm and great. And, I'm, you know, I know you start off every interview with asking about changing faces because, you know, that's, you know, where I come from. But, you know, right, at the end right, of right. it, you know, it's, it's great that they, they want to get to know Cassandra Lucas and what I have to offer. And um, right. I can't, you know, it's just a little different because you're used to having a sidekick or somebody on your right or your left, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I'll have to get used to. But other than that, I can't complain. I'm just grateful to be able to still do it, you know, 20-something years right. later. I am just grateful to, to, to be able to still be heard and, and hopefully fill a void for our fans out there and new fans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, for you to reach the Billboard chart, uh, you know, after all these years, it says uh, it speaks volumes because um, – you have a lot of artists who, who put out quality music and they, they can't even get it to be played, you know? Yeah, that's um, so true. And it's, and that's the sad part, too. Because of the new world that we're in, it's a good and a bad. Um, because, right, you know, right. it's so many people, you know, that can just post stuff up. It's millions and millions of singers, you know, and they're, they're mm-hmm, at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. So sometimes the good gets lost in the middle, and that's the part, you know, that's sad, mm-hmm. you know, because I, you know, you're on that internet and you see a lot of great people who should be heard, and right, you, don't, right. you don't get the opportunity to hear them because, you know, um, if they don't have money or they don't have the connections or whatever it mm-hmm. takes, they don't have the fan base or, you know, it's it's harder for them. So, you know, I'm just yeah, praying yeah. that, you know, hopefully the good can ride to the top. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel uh, about social social media? Because you know, obviously, when you guys came out, it was the '90s. There's barely no computers like that, mm-hmm. uh, especially no social social media. So, um, how do you feel honestly, on social media? Honestly, I'm getting used to it, Tony. I ain't gonna be. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a whole nother animal for me. Um, you know, right, right. you know, I have my my team. They go, you know, you gotta post more. You gotta. And I'm like, okay, but what am I gonna post? Like. You know what I mean? How many pictures can you take? Like, how many times do people want to see you? I don't want to see myself that much, you know? So it's it's a struggle for me. So, um, you know, I'm trying. I, like, I hate pictures. I, to be honest, I think I look better in person, to be honest, <laughs> mm-hmm. than in a picture. You know, it's just a lot. Um, But I'm I'm working on it, and I'm doing the best I can. And I'm, um, you know, trying to do better with it every day. Every day I'm getting better. <laughs> all right. All right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as, as far as, like, you know, music has evolved, um, obviously, in, in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you have things like, you know, Spotify and Tidal and, you mm-hmm. know, different streaming services. You know, albums don't really sell uh, hard copies anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the whole music industry and business has changed a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But how do you feel that has uh do you feel like that has helped or, or hurt the the artist? Well, I'm just really jumping back into it. Um, I know initially the music industry um, had a hard time, you know, with the um, the whole uh, computerized business, I should call it, because you know the right, music right. industry lost a lot of money behind it, um, mm-hmm. and but now they had to figure out a way to at least get, you know, something back. So the streaming services, you know, are a way for for artists to at least, you know, reap some of the benefits of their work. Um, right, right. And so I don't have a problem with that, you know, with, with 
uh, from an independent standpoint, you mm-hmm. know, now there are no more hard copies and stuff, so that's, you don't really have to spend money. You know, they said that they're going to be a, do away with CDs come the summer, like in Walmart, Target, they're not going to be any more. Right, right. So, I you know, that. you don't. You know, I recall having all my CDs, which I still have my CD collection with the jacket in the inside. You see who writes stuff. You read the mm-hmm, lyrics you mm-hmm. sit and you sing the songs, you know. I think <laughs> that whole um, that whole experience is gone, so I, I'm going to miss it because I like I like purchasing, you know, CDs or, or albums just so that it's, it's yours, you know. It's, this way it feels like it's kind of like everybody's when you're streaming. <laughs> but, mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. You know, I gotta, I gotta learn it. You know, and um, and this is the way it is. You have to go with time. You know, everything evolves. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you feel like um the musical direction that you're taking now it it is it will be, um, well received. Um, and and you're able to adapt with what's going on now. Yeah, I think it'll be well received because it's coming from my heart and it's true to to who I am and what I'm mm-hmm. doing. So I mm-hmm. think um if it was if I wasn't being honest or being me, um, mm-hmm. then you wouldn't you wouldn't receive it well. It wouldn't be received well. But for Absolutely. that reason I do believe that it will be because it's coming from my heart and it's uh it's it's being honest. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um what are what are some things that inspire you? Um, to write or to create music or to sing? What what are some of those life, things that inspire you? Life, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, what's going on with me. It's what's going on with my girlfriend or my sister mm-hmm. or, or <laughs> you or the world. Give love a chance, uh-huh. you know. Life, life is inspiring in itself, um, and it's so much going on right now that, you know, you can freaking just... <laughs> Right, you know, with your eyes closed, you know what I mean? It's it's a mm-hmm. lot going on, um, you know, in this crazy world we're in today. But um, I think, you know, the, op- the opportunity for me to do music um, is a great thing because, you know, it could be therapeutic. And, it, you mm-hmm. know, it helps me when I'm in the studio. It helps me when I'm creating. So hopefully I could, you know, help other people when they're listening. You know what right, I mean? Right. That's Yeah. And who are some um, artists that you would probably like to work with today? Oh, my gosh. I'm, like, all <laughs> over the place. So, you know, I, I like, even with the dance stuff, I would love to work with Calvin Harris, you know? When you're mm-hmm. talking about R&B, I love me, like, some Jasmine Sullivan, Neo, Bruno Mars, okay. Uh, okay. SZA, her. Uh, I could keep mm-hmm. going on, you know, on and on. Um, <laughs> then, you know, if you're talking about... Um, uh, Let's just say, like, you know, some, like, my my kind of style people, maybe like some Sade's and Anita Baker's, and you know? I mean, okay, so I, okay. We, we can go all over the, the spectrum. I just love music. <laughs> so I listen to an array of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, Frank Ocean, you know? I, yeah, we all can right. sit on this phone forever. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some good artists, though, so I, that, yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, some of those uh, relationships or, or, or business ships can come to fruition yes, uh, soon. Yes. Um, because that would be great. That would be that great. That would be um, nice. Especially, yes. especially with the voice that you have, because it's so different, but it's, it's relatable, uh, if that makes sense. Thank you. Um, yes. And then on the way, let me just, I didn't say my on the rap in be the Drakes, and I would love to even do, like, another collab with a Jay-Z and, a, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and Chance the Rapper. You see what I'm saying? Like, those are... Right, that's right. The, right. So I just wanted to right, make sure, like, just... I love I love um, Drake's, like, music sensibility. You know, even though mm-hmm. he's doing hip-hop, he still always keeps it musical. Or even, like, a Chris right, Brown, right. like, regardless of what he's doing, he never forgets to sing. You know, I love that about Right, him. right. So, you right. know, and he never forgets, okay, this is a song, and I need to do my part. So it's just, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I analyze, and I, you know, I sit and actually listen to the artists and, and see what mm-hmm. they bring. So, yeah. Right, right, right. That's why I said that's like with, with the, the, the albums, like, the, for instance, your songs that you released, the singles, um, I just listened to those today because I like to let a song sit on my spirit. Um, right. oh, just that's a good not mm-hmm. to only hear the the music, but to hear the lyrics, to hear the, the vocal arrangement, to hear all that kind of stuff. So 
that's that's what I listen for. So that's why I was telling you, like, even with Get Out Part 2, like when R. Kelly was on there, it was a different. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that I listen to, so I'm glad that you said that. Um, mm-hmm. And as far as Jay-Z, you guys did work with Jay-Z on all of my days um, mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and how was that, uh, working with Jay-Z? Because that was early Believe on. Believe it or not, we also. didn't get to go into the studio because uh, we were all in three separate places, you know. So, oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, so we had to record, and um, I believe uh, R. Kelly did his by itself, Jay-Z did his by itself, and then we came and did all of my days, um, you know, um, at the studio. And then there it was. We did the video together, though, so that was fun. But um, and that was out in Long Island, New York. But you know, it was just great. And now, when you look back, you're right, like, "Wow, yeah. that was a good collab." <laughs> it was. It was. Mm-hmm. Um, what are, What are some of the fondest memories that you have um, so far, like from from your career? Oh man, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, just you know, we were blessed to be able just to travel the world and stuff, um, and mm-hmm. to meet people like Aretha Franklin, James Brown, Cher you know, be on a stage with him, um, you know, just, it. you you can't ask for more, because um, I could right. probably stay on here for more, you know, just to be able to be on the, have your foot on the, on Madison Square Garden where you grew up, you know, in a stage scene so huge as a kid, you know, lived, grew mm-hmm. up in New York, and you to be on the other side, not in the audience, but on the stage, that, and, or Radio City Music Hall, like, Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. like a child's dream. So, right. Mm-hmm. And what what do you think is one of the biggest lessons that you took from um, from your past experiences? You know, like from the group, um, from that whole situation, and that you're taking into your new situation with being mm. a solo artist. Mm, good, good question. Well, I would say um, taking every moment, like every. You know, opportunity you get, try to seize on it, because I don't think Mm -hmm. we did that every single chance we got then. So as Mm -hmm. Cassandra Lucas, I'm going to make sure I do that. Um, You know, every chance you get to inspire, you know, someone, you know, take that opportunity. Um, Also, you know, you know, take a second to smell the roses because you get to tour the world. Um, but when you come back, uh, you don't, you know, you just remember the hotel room. But now mm-hmm, you need mm-hmm. to be able to actually go out and see and feel and touch people because, you know, when you're on tour, a lot of times it's just tour bus or airplane to the hotel to venue, back again, tour bus, airplane, right, hotel, right. venue. You know, so <laughs> just to just to give yourself time to breathe, you know, and to okay. be able to smell the roses. Mm-hmm. All right. And and as far as the solo career is concerned, um, what are you hoping to have be the outcome, or are you just you know letting it great happen? Great things, as great things have got to be the outcome. <laughs> great things, right, right. Um, great music. Um, uh, hoping for a tour. Um, so that I can get out there and, and hit the stage and, and do what I love and, and right, right. you know, be one with, with, with people, you know, and mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. Yeah, just great things. That's that's what I'm hoping for. And, you know, just to do what I love. All right. Um, besides the music, um, do you have any more aspirations that you hope to accomplish soon? Um, I, I have, like, a whole bunch of things, uh, you know, a couple of charities. I wanted to start a, a women and children's center um, for single moms. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have a lot of things on my agenda, but I know that mm-hmm. they have to come first through through music. So once that door right, opens, right. I'm going to kick open the other ones. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, I just, and then this is my last question I just wanted to ask you. Um, if you could describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Oh, gosh. Oh, quirky, maybe, <laughs> silly, <laughs> I'm silly, quirky, um, and I think people's person, like, you know, I call myself the, the little Oprah of my crew, you know, just if okay, you've got okay. a problem, come talk to Cassandra, you know, I, I'm a good listener, how about that, good listener. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, good listener. That works, that works. Well, Miss Cassandra, let me tell you, it was a joy and it was a pleasure to thank absolutely you. talk to you today. And I wanted to thank you because I'm grateful that you even, you know, agreed to do this because you don't have to. Um, so just thank you for that. Um, 
you know, and you, you've been so wonderful today. Um, before you go, just make sure you um, let everybody know where they can find you at on, you know, um, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or whatever it might be, and where they can get the singles. Okay. So first let me thank you because, no, I do mm -hmm. need to talk to people like yourself so that we could okay. spread the word, spread love, spread joy. So I right, appreciate right. you taking the time and us talking. It's been a wonderful um, conversation. And secondly, mm -hmm. I forgot to mention with the single Give Love a Chance that a part of the proceeds for, of the sales for that single are going to help. I partnered with um, – uh, um, directrelief.org to uh, okay. give to the hurricane victims. I know it's been a while, and you know things. We have so many, so many things going on in the world. We still think that there are people that are suffering or without homes or without right, food right. and light. So the sales proceeds from Give Love a Chance are going to the hurricane from Texas to St. Thomas to Puerto Rico to wherever they are. Um, so okay. I just wanted okay. to let everybody know that 99 cents goes a long way. And it thirdly, you, yeah, you can find me on IG, uh, Twitter, Facebook at I am Cassandra Lucas or Cassandra mm -hmm. of CF. And my website is Cassandra Music World. And my, the label website is CRC Music. So all of those places. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, is Thank there anything so else much. that we forgot to mention? Nope, just give love a chance. That's what I say. Please. <laughs> okay, so everybody make sure you go pick up Cassandra's uh, singles. On um, what is it, Spotify? Uh, yeah, Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, uh, Apple Tidal, Music, Title, uh, iTunes. Yep, all the streaming services. Okay. <laughs> all right, all so make sure you go pick up all those singles. Um, and Miss Cassandra, like I said, I just want to thank you again, and God bless you. I wish you much success, um, as you already have had. So I don't have to wish you that much. Oh, no, you have but, to. We all need to. we all need wishes and blessings. <laughs> right, right. So thank you so much, and I wish you the ultimate success, and God bless you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great um, day. You too. Thank you so much again, okay? Okay. All right, Tony. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.